and welcome back to Ali Nuts and Sews. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn a technique called Fair Isle, which is when you take two or three balls of wool. You can go beyond that, but two or three is generally um, the standard number because once you start to throw in a few more balls, it gets very complicated and things can get tangled and stuff like that. And what you generally do is you knit little patterns into your um, piece. We're going to go with the jumper, jersey again. I'm going to start with a very basic pattern, which is the one by one vertical stripe. You can see here, I made a little sample piece and I was actually going to use this one to do the tutorial, but I made it way too small. And uh, yeah, so this sadly won't fit me. So I've just paused it here. I'll probably turn it into a little t-shirt and then sell it or something. <laughs> but yeah. All right. So let's get started. A couple of things to note before we get going is that fair aisle knitting for whatever good reason, the needle size that you use doesn't necessarily equate to how um, uh, thick or what's the word I'm looking for, how big and buoyant these stitches are going to be. Uh, for example, this here, this needle, would have produced a much thicker um, and stretchier knit piece if I'd gone with like a one-by-one -one rib or if I'd even just done a plain gart or something like this. So what I'm really getting at is that you're going to end up needing to cast on like a significant number more stitches than you would ordinarily with a another knit. So if you had watched my last tutorial, which was the beaded rib knit stitch, I actually followed the exact same pattern that I'm going to teach you guys now, where we made four of these sort of triangular, sorry, triangular shaped pieces. And then what we did is we crocheted them together and we created this neck and shoulder piece and then we pick up the body piece here in the front in the back and we move the two arms over onto a spare pair of needles and then we knit that down. So I did the exact same pattern with the beaded rib knit stitch tutorial but for that one I stopped casting on stitches at about I think it was 44, 43 round about there. With this one I've gone all the way up to 70 and you can see like this is still going to be a fitted jersey. I made this one from here to here. You can see that what I'm talking about when I say you put the arms onto a spare piece and then you knit down. So these are four triangular pieces like this one here and with this one I stopped casting on stitches at I think around 54 which was 10 extra stitches than the beaded rib knit jersey and it still was way smaller than that jersey like way like much smaller and I used the same needle so bear that in mind what I would recommend to you is to just hold this piece here at the end or your loose stitchy pieces against your torso and just make sure that it fits you comfortably before you stop casting on stitches. Um, I've stopped at 70. This is still going to be, I wouldn't call it like snuggy, but it's going to be mildly fitted. So to get going, you're going to need to have your two balls of wool. I've picked like a, a matcha green and sort of a cappuccino um, brown, if you will. And the needle size that I'm using, firstly it's circular, sorry about any banging. Um, this needle size I think is somewhere between a 4 and a 5 US size. And you've got a spare pair of circular needles on the side, oh, sorry again about the banging, which are smaller than the needles that you're working with now so that when you transfer your stitches over, it's easy to transfer them over, you're not going to struggle. And we're going to start by casting on with just one strand of wool, 20 stitches. Once you have all 20 stitches cast onto your needles, you can then grab your next color. 
and you're going to weave it in like this so it's just a regular knit you're going to put your needle in behind like so then you grab the wool with say that much behind and you just slip it on your needle like that holding on to the two ends you're going to knit that first stitch the second stitch you're going to come in with the second color the cappuccino and then for the third stitch you're going to go back to your matcha green the fourth cappuccino pay attention at this point that you're not accidentally grabbing the the short end here you need to make sure that you always got the long ends and for the very first few rows and especially for these um, four triangular pieces this process is going to feel a little bit fiddly because you're going to be working out how to juggle two different colors simultaneously or at least in in succession but eventually you'll get a feel for how to hold the two pieces simultaneously um, what i do is i'll wrap the one color around my index finger and then I'll hold the second color between my middle finger and my thumb, like this. And then it just makes it a little bit easier. I've seen other people do it differently. They are way more advanced in their knitting skills than I am. They've been doing this for so much longer. Yeah, for me, this is the most comfortable way to hold two uh, strands while working with them both. Okay, we now have our one by one pattern coming through. For these triangular pieces, we're going to be knitting in a stockinette stitch. So that means the first row, the right side, is going to be a knit stitch. And then, we went, <laughs> and then when we turn it around and we knit the second row, which is the wrong side, we have to pull all of these stitches now. But first you're going to add on a new stitch because we're going to be increasing at the beginning of every row. So I've got here a little caramel color, a little cappuccino, which means I want to add on a matcha green. So I'm going to grab that. I'm just going to cast on a stitch. Then coming in from behind, we're going to pull that stitch. And then I'm going to pull the cappuccino, pull the matcha, pull the cappuccino, and this whole row is going to be pull stitches. When you're knitting in the pull, it is a little more fiddly oops, um, than it is when you're knitting in the knit stitch because I feel like I can't hold on to both of the uh, strands of wool at the same time than when I'm knitting in the knit stitch. But once we've made these three, sorry, these four triangular pieces and we've put them all together, and we, we, at that point we will start knitting in the round, which means we can just knit continuously in a knit stitch the entire time. So it's just really for these, this neck and shoulder um, piece for the four pieces that you have to flip between the pull and the knit on the right and the wrong side because you're creating a stock knit stitch. Another thing to note is that on the pull side is where all of your um, carryover floater stitches are going to be. So you want to make sure that you're doing all of the carryover stitches. They're not going this way, which they can't because you're going to be purling anyway. But that is just something to note. Okay, now we're going back to the right side, which is going to be the third row. And we are going to add on another stitch. And we're starting with a matcha green, which means I want to add on a cappuccino. Oh, another thing to note is you want to be very careful of your balls of wool getting all knotted up 
this is something that happens so easily so just try and keep them nice and neat and separated at all times okay so i'm going to cast on a stitch in the cappuccino now just pull that first stitch nice and tight first and we're going to knit this whole row in the knit stitch alternating between the two colors again keeping an eye on which piece you're using and making sure that you're not using that short end by mistake after you've gotten a few rows in that really won't be an issue because ah wait here we stop you can see i've accidentally picked up a matcha green instead of cappuccino so i'm just going to pull that stitch out there and i'm going to pick up the cappuccino stitch behind it is over here the through oh Oh gosh, one, two, three, no, it's one, two, three, four, okay, disaster saved. Alrighty, so we are knitting in alternate cappuccino and matcha. When I get to the end of this row, I'm going to flip it around and then we're going to knit all of those stitches in pull, but we're going to remember to cast on a new stitch at the beginning of every row. And we are going to do that for me for a size 10 body. I am doing that to 70 stitches. But like I said to you, what I would recommend for your own body is just take this piece and fit it comfortably without stretching it against your torso and just see if it's going to fit nicely or if you maybe need to just keep going and adding on a couple more stitches. And when it comes to sweaters, I generally always go bigger than smaller. Uh, they, yeah, it just, a bigger sweater just is comfy. It's, it, you, you just, yeah. They're more just more comfortable, I guess. That's oh, we're not curling. Sorry, let's go back. Um, <laughs> bigger sweaters are just more comfortable, so I err on like the larger end, but yeah, so just bear that in mind when you're gauging your sizing. It's important that this fits you nicely. Go bigger if you're not sure, just add on a few more stitches. But I'm going to end mine off at 70 stitches. When you've knit out all four of these triangular shaped pieces, so remember we started up here and we knitted the first row and then we added one, knitted a row, added one, knitted a row. This is one of them. I'll turn this inside out so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, once you've done all four of those and you've transferred all four of them onto the circular needles, and you've got all four of these pieces on your circular needles. What you're going to do then is you're going to grab a darning needle, which is this thing here. It's just basically a very big plastic needle designed specifically for knitting. <clears throat> and you're going to come in with just one piece of wool. You can pick whichever color it is. I went with green. And with the right side facing you, starting at the top and trying to match up this pattern as much as you can you're going to go in what closest resembles a mattress stitch 
So a mattress stitch is when you come and say these are two, the line is dividing and these are two pieces of wool. You go in to those little lines there, these little line areas here, and you stick your, your wool through there and into the second one, into there, and you go up across like this. Um, and you are going to sew these four pieces down. So we've got one here, one here, which is now the arm, one which is the back, and the other one which is the other arm. And then you're going to transfer all of the arm stitches onto a spare piece of very differently colored yarn or wool, which we've done here. So that's one of the four pieces. You're going to transfer the other stitches onto back onto your original pair of circular needles, the other arm onto some spare yarn, and the back onto those spare pair of needles, sorry, the original pair of needles, and then you're going to keep knitting now in the round. So to do that, you're going to be knitting constantly in the same direction as opposed to the original one where you were flipping them backwards and forwards and you needed to knit um, in the knit stitch on the right side and the pull stitch on the wrong side. So now we're constantly knitting in the knit stitch, which means it's just slightly easier because you don't have to juggle these two um, lines of wool quite as much when you're getting on the wrong side and you're trying to knit in pull. So for me, this is how I hold it. I'll just twist the one around my index finger and then I'll pinch the second one between my middle finger and my thumb and it's just a little bit easier to alternate them like this. And you're going to knit the front and the back torso piece together and you're going to knit in the round until this measures up against your torso and you're happy with how long it is. So once you've knitted down to the waist area, so you've held it up to your body and you like how long it is and you're ready to create the waistband, you first of all you're going to cast on to and by cast onto you, literally just going to move over to a much thinner pair of needles. I think these are a US size 2. And then we're going to change it up slightly. In that for one of them, so I picked it random. I literally, it was the first stitch that I knitted onto my thinner needles, which happened to be the beige. This one, we pull like so. And then the green one we knit so it's sort of like in an effort of a one by one rib knit but because it is fair isle it's not actually creating that wavy texture it's flat still but it is giving it a very interesting sort of different band like this so what I would recommend is that whatever stitch you are doing or color you are doing in the pull stitch you keep that one wrapped around your finger because it's just a little bit easier to manipulate that and bring it forward um, the whole time and then the other one you can just leave loose and just to reiterate how a pull goes uh, it goes in from behind zoom in So in from behind, around anti-clockwise, over, and then you pull your stitch out. And you're going to move your thread or your wool to the back again. You're going to pick up the other color and you're going to do a regular knit stitch. <clears throat> Sorry, I have hay fever, so I'm a bit flammy. <laughs> okay, and then you bring your other wool back forward again. <clears throat> knit, sorry, pull, and knit the second color. I'll do the pull again one more time really slowly. So you bring the wool forward, take your needle in from behind, anti-clockwise, and pull it back again. And you're going to do this now until you feel like this waistband is long enough 
and then when you get to that point you're going to cast it off with elasticated thread that is quite important because this particular technique doesn't have a hell of a lot of stretch to it so you want to give your waist as much stretch as possible see um, I accidentally moved on and started knitting the arm without explaining what I did but essentially what we did here is all of these stitches that we moved over onto the brightly colored thread or um, yarn wherever you are in the corner of the world that you come from and whatever you call it so we transferred all of these stitches onto the same size needles that we used to knit up the torso except that we're using much smaller needles this is what i mean when i say smaller i mean this cord here is smaller so it's not a hassle to knit round and round in a smaller piece like an arm you don't have to keep pulling out the cord and when i got down to picking up the stitches around the armpit area here i just picked up a few extra ones because there was a bit of a gape between this bit and this bit and I just used green in this case I just picked one of the colors I transitioned into the one by one after that and I think I picked up about six or seven stitches roughly around about there and then when I got to a point where I had I think over here it is two of the same color but I needed to move into two different um, I just merged those two so I knitted the two together Okay, so we have now knitted out our sleeve to the exact length we want it to be and we're going to do the cuff. So in order to create this little sort of snug bowl shape here, you have probably 68, between 68 and 66 stitches already, sorry, 78 and 76 stitches on your needles already which is the entire circumference of the sleeve. So we need to now decrease the, those stitches to 34. And we're going to move over to a much smaller size needle. So currently we're working on a, a US somewhere between 4 and 6. And we're going to move over to a US size 2. Still the smaller cable. First thing we're going to do is abandon one of the colors. So I've decided to make the borders um, the cappuccino color. So I'm going to let go of the matcha. And we're now going to head over to the smaller needles. And we do it quite simply like this. And for the first row, probably two rows, we are going to knit just plain um, knit stitch but every second stitch we're going to knit two together so it's going to be like this knit one knit two knit one Knit two. Okay, and I'm going to go around like this. Knit one. Knit two. Until all of these stitches are on the smaller needles. Okay, so all of our stitches are now on the smaller needles. And I've just done a quick count. And I'm at 52. So... We're going to add our row counter or marker because that's important and I'm going to continue to do this one more time. Um, so knit one, knit two stitches together, knit one, knit two stitches together and we're going to make sure that we don't go past 34 stitches because that's exactly how many stitches we've got on this cuff. And now we've arrived at 34 stitches on our needles and we're going to switch over to a one by one rib knit. So I've knitted the first stitch, I'm going to pull the second, knit, pull, knit, pull, 
and we're gonna go round and round and round like that until we have the exact same number of stitches as we have on this cuff. We are finally ready to pick up the next stitches. So this is how we're going to do that. First of all, we're going to need a pair of longer needles because this neck is actually quite wide. And then once we've picked all the stitches up on these longer needles, we're going to knit them over onto the US size 2 small little cuff needles because the neck ultimately should be tighter. So here we go. I'm keeping all the borders the same color, which is going to be the cappuccino. And I've got my crochet hook. And grab the end, find a starting point. And we're literally just going to go in like this. Pull a stitch through and pop that onto the needles. These first couple of stitches are a little awkward and they feel like they want to fall off and do fall off. So just bear with them. We're going to turn this neck but I want it to look neat so I'm not going to go for these top stitches here. I'm actually going to go for the stitch underneath. It would be easier if I had a much smaller crochet hook but I don't and we're going to move on with life. For the second one I just pulled both ends through. It just sort of secures this end and it makes it a little tighter and easier to not lose it because otherwise these um, stitches get very loose. Just trying to follow the color scheme here. So it's green next. Beige. Green. Beige. Green. I'm just going to go around now until I've gotten all of the stitches all the way around the neck on the needles. All the stitches are on the needles now and I'm ready to move over to my teeny tiny needles and we're going to do this in a one by one loop knit. So knit, pull, knit, pull, knit, pull, knit, pull, etc. Until, oh, I'm probably going to turn this collar, I think I mentioned that just now. So we're going to make this, um, I think about 8 centimeters long, and then we will cast it off. I've knitted out, I think, probably 7 centimeters, and if I fold that over, I can see that that's actually a really nice amount for a collar. So I'm going to cast off now. And what we're going to do is we're going to cast off with the original much bigger needles. That's just going to open this area up and make it look, well not make it look, make it wider. So that's easier when we sew it down, when we turn the collar. So here we go. When you're casting off in the one by one, you still have to knit the one by one stitch ordinarily but because we're turning this it's not going to make a huge difference but usually you would knit pull cast off knit pull cast off um, that keeps that s shape in the end in the seam but like i said because we're going to be turning this and sewing it down you won't actually see that so it's no big deal in this particular instance you can just knit knit cast off And we're going to cast off with the long tail method, meaning you're going to cut quite a long piece when you get to your last stitch. And that is because we're going to use this now 
to sew that color down. So we're going to follow the pattern and this one's starting with a knit stitch. So we're going to sew into a um, purl stitch here. And then we're going from a purl stitch into this pull stitch into a knit stitch. Knit to a pull, pull to a knit, and you're going to do this the whole way around. And she is all done. I just need to run the jersey through the wash to settle all the stitches. I use, <clears throat> generally I always use 100% acrylic wool so I can literally just throw this into the washing machine now and wash it on a 40 degree or 30 degree or less and it'll be perfectly fine. But if you use wool, even just a slightest percentage of real wool, you'll have to just soak this in cold water. Okay, so it is out the wash and it is hanging now to dry. And you can see the stitches have settled really nicely. The colors are now evenly dispersed. Not one is pushing forward and the other not. It's just making a beautiful stripe. And it's done. So this is your beginner entry introduction into Fair Isle. Next up, we're going to learn to do something a little more complicated. We're going to learn to do a little pattern that looks like this. Don't be put off. It's actually very, very easy. So make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for that tutorial coming up next.